Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reading Fly Guys Present Garbage and Recycling. Let's get started. A boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name, Buzz. I have a special treat for you, Fly Guy. Buzz said, today we are visiting a landfill. Yes! Fly Guy loved the garbage. He and Buzz couldn't wait to learn more about trash. Trash from homes, schools, and businesses is called municipal solid waste. Here are some examples of things that make up municipal waste. Here we have paper, we got metal, we have leaves and grass, plastic and glass. A city sanitation department or a local garbage company is responsible for collecting, recycling, and discarding these materials. In the United States, people throw away over 250 million tons of trash each year, more than any other country. Most of that trash ends up in countries, 2,000 or so landfills. Landfills are areas where garbage is discarded. A landfill starts as a large hole in the ground covered, covered with clay, soil, and a plastic liner. This keeps waste from getting into the soil and groundwater underneath. Giant landfill compactors crush and pack down trash. Then the garbage is covered with a thin layer of soil. Over time, tiny organisms, called bacteria, eat the trash, causing it to decompose or break down. The bacteria in a landfill also cause several gases to form, including one very stinky gas called hydrogen sulfide. This gas smells like rotten eggs. It is so stinky, humans can detect it even in tiny amounts. That's why trash sometimes stinks. A fly can smell garbage from almost five miles away. Sanitation departments and gar garbage companies around the co country collect waste using 130,000 garbage and recycling trucks. These trucks haul the waste to landfills and recycling pants. A typical garbage truck can haul around 20,000 pounds of trash. Some garbage trucks use diesel fuel. Others run on a natural gas curated from landfill gases. Natural gas is less expensive and better for the environment. Many trucks have mechanical arms, controls inside the truck and are used to grab, lift, and dump containers of trash into the top of the truck. Other garbage trucks are rear loaders. This means that garbage is dumped into the back of the truck. Then a shovel-like wall pushes the trash further inside. The crunch sound you hear is the trash being squished to make more room. Here's a packer panel, a tailgate, grab handle, loading hopper, loading still, and a riding step. Sanitation workers have very dangerous jobs. Lifting heavy containers of trash can cause injuries. Workers might touch something harmful in the trash, such as broken glass or dangerous chemicals. And sanitation workers often ride standing on the outside of their trucks, so a crash with another vehicle can be deadly. Sanitation workers on uniforms helped to keep them safe. They wear gloves and boots for protection, and their outermost layer of clothes helps make sanitation workers more visible to other drivers. Once there is no more space in a landfill, it is covered and closed. This land used to be a landfill. The machine continues to vent gases that form beneath the surface. Sometimes this land is later turned into a park, a golf course, or even a ski resort. But what happens to the garbage? That doesn't get sent to a landfill. In the United States, the rest of our trash is recycled or turned into soil through composing. 
recycles, recycles, recycles. In the United States, state and local governments make their own recycling laws. Starting a recycling program can be expensive, but recycling can save money and the environment in the long run. Recycling programs are expanding. Right now, 25 states have laws that say certain electronics called e-waste must be recycled. Laws like these are important because many electronics contain toxic materials that can be harmful when they end up in landfills. This is America's Recycling Day! November 15th, November. Most metal, paper, plastic, and glasses can be recycled. Rubber tires and lead acid batteries used in vehicles can be recycled too. But some items like light bulbs and dishes cannot be recycled. Plastic like potato chip bags and plastic wraps can cannot be recycled either. E-waste must be carefully recycled through special programs, television, phones, and refrigerators are all e-waste. Here is a computer and printer e-waste. When a truck arrives at a recycling center, its contents are dumped out. Then recyclables are moved to a conveyor belt. Everything is separated and trash that was mixed in by mistake is removed. Similar materials are crushed, compact, and tied up in huge cubes called bales. Then bales are transported to different plants or processing before being made into new products. Each bale of paper or cardboard saves about 15 trees. Let's follow a bale of plastic bottles to a plastic recycling facility. A forklift breaks up the bale and drops it onto a conveyor belt. The bottles are pre-washed and sorted by color. Next, the bottles are washed and heated to remove labels and bottle caps. The bottles are ground into flakes, then they are washed again and dried. The flakes are melted and made into tiny plastic pelts. These plastic pelts can be used to make new things. Carpets, fleece jackets, and park benches can all be made from recycling plastic. New plastic bottles can be made too. Nice fleece. Natural materials like fruits and vegetables, eggshells, and leaves take up a lot of space in landfills, but they can be recycled through composing. This process breaks down food and yard waste into a rich soil for gardens and yards in just two to four months. Some people compost in their backyards, but some cities like San Francisco and New York are beginning to pick up this waste along with trash and recycling. This helps reduce the amount of trash in landfills. A typical American family throws away $1,300 of food in one year. Unfortunately, some trash doesn't get disposed of properly. This litter ends up in our lakes, rivers, and oceans. When plastic trash ends up in the ocean, it breaks down into confetti-sized pieces. Ocean currents have pushed millions of these plastic bits together in one part of the Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Water sample from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. That's really dirty. Birds and marine animals think the plastic is food and eat it. The plastic can make the animals sick. If you like to eat fish, you might find yourself eating our ocean plastic trash one day too. Nasty! To keep trash out of landfills, follow these RS reduce, reuse, and recycle. Easy! Just take one. Buzz and Fly Guys 3 RS Tips First, only buy things you really need and use them until they wear out. Two, bring reusable shopping bags to the store. Three, 
reuse shoes boxes and cardboard for art projects or storage. Four, reduce the amount of paper towels you use in the bathroom. You only need one to dry your hands. Five, use a refillable container from home instead of plastic water bottles. Six, compose your family's food and yard waste. Seven, use clean empty food jars to store leftovers or as many flower pots. Eight, reduce how much trash you throw away by donating used clothes, toys, and electronics instead. Nine, properly recycle e-waste, metal, plastic, paper, and glass. Ten, rinse plastic in glass containers before recycling them. Buzz and Fly Guy pledge to their part to make our planet a better, healthier place. We know just what to do to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Buzz reminded Fly Guy as they headed home. Yes! They could not wait until their next field trip. That was the book of Fly Guy Presents Garbage and Recycling. I really like it. You really do learn a lot. It's really crazy that a typical American family can throw away $1,300 of food a year. You can feed like 10 trillion homeless people from that. So, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.